everyone, it's Sharon, Recreation Programmer for Child, Youth, and Family, and I am bringing you another activity today. This activity is going to both require indoor and outdoors. We are going to make ladybug rocks. So this means that a part of your task is to go out as a family and do some rock hunting. Now, depending on where you happen to live and what your living space is like, depends on what size rock you're looking for. You do want to be able to carry them home, so don't be looking for some giant boulders to put in your front yard. If you are in an apartment, you can find little baby rocks, and those can go in plants, or they can just be a cute little decoration somewhere. Um, this is a pretty decent sized rock. Uh, if you can see, it doesn't really matter if there's a chunk off the back. You want to look for something that's a little round, um, and that's going to sit relatively nicely. This one has some gunge on it. That's okay, too. Um, but yeah, like you're looking for something that's pretty round, pretty flat, and it's gonna sit kind of nicely. Once you bring them home, you're gonna need to wash them off. A little scrub brush and some soap and water. They look lovely. Let them dry, and then you're ready to go. So you will need a few other things. Uh, this little uh, yogurt container has some water in it. I would suggest that if you have little ones that you maybe use something a little bit taller just because um, the weight of the brushes may knock it over and you don't want that to happen. Um, paint tray that we have seen in previous videos. I just keep rinsing it and I'm going to keep on using it. I have that piece of cardboard to protect my surface. You can use newsprint, um, a random piece of cardboard, a little piece of plastic, whatever you happen to have. And you need paint. Most of us think ladybugs are red. So red paint obviously is a great start, but you know what? Ladybugs don't have to be red. Ladybugs can be whatever color your kids want them to be. Um, so obviously you can start with red paint, but you don't have to. The other couple that you will need, you'll need some black paint and a little bit of white. You don't need very much um, of the white. Tiny little dab pretty much, and then the black you'll need as well. I also have some uh, yellow paint. Everybody maybe remembers the swarms of orange ladybugs that we had. Whew a number of years ago, 2003-ish probably. Um, but ladybugs can be orange, they can be kind of yellowy, so make them however you want. It's up to your kids to just paint and play. Couple brushes, brush size honestly doesn't matter because you're just slapping a whole lot of red paint on a rock, so you don't need a lot of precision tools. You might like something a little bit smaller for when we do the spots on them, but even then I have some tricks that'll help you so that you don't have to have all of that equipment. So, red paint. You could squirt some directly on your rock um, because again, not a whole lot of finesse to this one. It's just a red rock. Um, or you can squirt a little bit in a container. Brush. And you're just gonna paint that on. Super easy. Paint, paint, paint. Um, until you have good coverage. Now, remember not to paint the bottom because um, until the top is dry, because otherwise it will stick to whatever surface it is and it'll mess up your paint job. Um, for ladybugs, really, if there's something that's gonna go in the garden, you don't really need to paint the bottom unless you, you really, really want to. Um, so didn't do a fantastic job on this, but that's okay, because this is just an example. So you're just gonna paint that up. If you need a couple coats, that's fine. Hard part can be, again, is you gotta wait for it to dry. Doesn't usually take that long, but again, you can go play another game or you can go for another walk while this dries. So I'm gonna set that aside. And I have some examples. Here's a yellow rock. Again, I didn't paint the bottom because I'm not worried about it. Uh, I have an orangey one. You can see that they're different sizes. This one's kind of red, red round. Uh, this one's kind of like an orangey red, a dark rusty color. Again, nice and flat, so super easy to work with. Um, and we'll use this guy as our example. Roll that out again. No. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna set that aside. So your rock is dry. Let me grab some black paint. 
you're not supposed to paint how I'm going to do it. This just happens to be how I am. Again, usually what you should do is squirt a little bit into a container because leaving them open like this can dry them out, but I'm not going to be taking too long and it's something that I do. I do have a smaller brush for this. You don't necessarily have to, it will make it a little bit easier. But even for this brush, you can use the sides of your brush to make a finer line. If you have younger kids, you could draw on a line in pencil or something, or even for yourself, um, so that you know where you want your line to be. I'm drawing a line down my center to separate my ladybug with its two wings in half. So there you go. Once you figure out which end you want to be for your head, you're going to do a little semicircle around the top and you'll make it as big as you happen to want it. And it depends sort of on, again, it's the shape of the rock, how you want your face to look. If you want eyeballs a little bit closer on the front, whether you want them on the back. Uh, and then you're just going to finish that up. There's no right or wrong with this really. Um, it's however big you want your little ladybug's head to be. So there it is. I did do a slight curve as it's coming towards the head just so it's not an abrupt line into your, into your head, but it really, really doesn't matter that much. So there you go. Um, now you're going to put on some spots and they don't have to be perfect spots. They can be weird little shapes. They don't have to be symmetrical. I'm using kind of the corner of the brush. Um, you can use the whole brush. You could twirl your brush to make a little circle. Uh, it doesn't really, really matter. If you happen to have a thicker brush with a blunter end. Um, you can dip your end in and make dots that way. That wasn't a very good example because it's a, uh, a smaller bore brush. But if you have some of those large sort of preschooly type brush or even the foam brushes that have sort of a flat end, they're great for doing things like that on. I'm not getting too fancy here. Um, Put on however many dimlets that you happen to want for your ladybug. It's not super clean. I am pulling this brush out because as I was saying, if you have something that has a little bit of a larger end, it's going to work really well for eyeballs because they can be, everybody fights with getting sort of that perfect round eyeball and eyes can be a little bit difficult. If you have googly eyes, uh, you could use those. You could glue them on with a hot glue gun. They may not hold up as well outside, but if you're keeping it inside, super fun. You'll have a little googly eye guy. If you're not, again, pour some white paint out. I'm cheating a little bit. And then just dab on where you think you want your eyes are. Eyes are. Eyes to be. Um... And then you can kind of round it out a little bit. They don't have to be perfect, but there they are. Your little guy's got a couple little eyeballs. And I'm gonna use a smaller brush. You should wait for this to dry. I'm just doing this a little bit fast just because we are doing a video. And using that end of the brush again, uh, depending on how big your, your little ladybug is, you could use a toothpick or something of that nature as well. And there's your ladybug. I have also made and completed a little tiny baby one. So that one's a, like a nice little size. It could go in a planter um, in the house. If you have a nice plant in the house, it could go in there. Or it's a cute little guy. He could just sit on a table somewhere and be a knickknack and require a little bit of dusting. I will say, if you are going to be placing these outside, 
get a good quality sealer for outdoors and uh, once they're all dry is give them a really good coat of sealer make sure that you get the bottom as well regardless of whether you paint the bottom still give it a really good seal and then they should be good to go outside i didn't bring in the one that i've had out in my garden but he's been out there probably for about 12 years and is holding up not too badly he needs a little tlc uh, but is doing pretty well. So these are super cute. You can give them to a gift. You can pop them in your garden. Um, and rocks are fantastic. You can create other little critters and we may do another video on doing some of those. Um, but they're super fun and just to paint and then you just plop them in the garden and it's super patch of color. Uh, these paints that I'm using today happen to be a patio paint. So they're designed to go outside. They have a sealer built in, but you don't have to. But if you are going to put it outside, as I said, make sure that you use a paint, um, a sealer, because it will just make it last that much longer. And even if you are leaving them inside, if you have access to a paint sealant, I would put it on there. It just makes them a little bit easier to clean up and maintain if they get a little bit dusty or they need a little wipe down. Um, having that sealer on them is going to protect them and make your life a little bit easier. So again, Two-fold activity, super fun. Get outside, go for a great walk, hunt for some rocks, have a little fun with it, bring them home, wash them up, and paint them. So don't forget to get outside to play and live and play every day. See you next time. Bye.